Hello fellow saints, subscribers, welcome to my channel. I want to uh, have a little topic on what's going to happen to us when Jesus comes. What's going to happen to us if we refuse or if we, re if we refuse salvation? Or if we reject Jesus, what's going to happen to us? I want you to, um, I just want you to say to yourself right now, whoever's listening, whoever's under my voice right now, say to yourself, what's going to happen to me when Jesus comes? What's going to happen to all my friends, all my family? Members, everybody that I know and love, and the rest of this world, what's going to happen to us? The real answer is going to terrify you. It's going to terrify you because there's an eternal ending for all of us. And for those who choose Jesus, of course, it's a beginning. I say beginning because when you choose Jesus, your old life ends and your new life begins. Your old life ends, which is the world that you live in right now, the darkness, the wickedness. You don't have to do too much. All you have to do is click on YouTube, click on your TV or whatever, and you can see all the wickedness that's taking place right now. The thing with P. Diddy, all those things that he that he's done, just his sins alone has had so many consequences with the whole music industry. You know what I'm saying? But you know, he brought it upon himself. His heart was full of wickedness and deceit. Now he's paying the price. Consequences. Everything in life has consequences, including your sins. But um, what's going to happen when Jesus comes? And the between time, and the between time, we have to, we have to stand strong in the Lord because there will come a time where we will not be able to eat, we will not be able to buy or sell, and there will come a time where the Antichrist will impose, uh, will impose a new world order, and there will be a whole new monetary system. And um, it's going to require you to take the mark. And those that don't take the mark will either be persecuted or murdered. But um, the thing about that is, when you have Jesus, you don't fear death. Because we live for him because he died for us. And we get eternal life with Jesus. Ask yourself this. Wouldn't you, um, okay, if you haven't read the Bible, open your Bible and start reading the Bible. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let you know now. When Jesus comes, if you are the elected, if you are chosen, if you are the church, everyone that you've read about in the Bible it's going to be in heaven when we go to heaven with Jesus. You're going to see everyone in the Bible. This is real talk. Including all the prophets, including all the um, judges, including the apostles, everybody that followed Jesus. And whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
That's the book you want to be in. You want to be in the Lamb's book of life. Because if you're in the Lamb's book of life, you are saved. You are elected. You're always protected. You're never neglected. And these vessels he has selected. You heard me? So ask yourself, I think I really need Jesus. I think I really need to know the Lord. I think I really need to get on my knees, repent, get on my knees and pray to the Lord. Because Jesus said, no, God said, those that know my son Jesus shall have everlasting life. But those that know it not of my son are already condemned. You don't want to be condemned. That's the worst thing. You think this world is bad right now? All this stuff going on, all this wickedness. Your friends ain't your friends. They'll backstab you in a heartbeat. Mm, yeah, they'll talk about you behind your back. You know what I'm saying? You think this world is, this world, everything that's going on in this world is nothing if you're separated from God. Because that's going to be tribulation. There's going to be God's wrath. The beast will be let loose for 1,000 years. Scripture says, Woe to those who are, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the beast has been unleashed. The beast has been set free. So you ain't seen nothing yet. This right here, this world we're living right now is Disneyland compared to what's coming ahead, compared to what's next before Jesus comes. But here's the goody, goody, goody about it. If you're elected, if you're selected, if you're chosen, if you're in the church, if you're in the kingdom of God, in other words, if you choose Jesus today and and you receive the Holy Spirit and you, you receive the transformation, here's the goody goody about it. You won't have to face none of those things because when Jesus comes to battle up the church, you won't have to worry about anything that's coming next after that because you're not going to be here. You're going to be with the Father. You're going to be in heaven. You heard me? Amen. And and before and be, uh, while those thousand years with the uh, the, the mill it's called the millenn millennial reign. For one thousand years, you're gonna be with Jesus and the saints and the apostles and everybody else in the church who's been saved, living and dead. Because Jesus said, the first will be last, and the last will be first. So, uh, it's going to come down with the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem. So, yeah, if you uh, said Jesus today, you have to face none of that. None of that. Because right now, we are in dire straits. Because this world right now is in need of salvation. And everybody needs to be saved from the decimation that's coming to this wicked nation through God's proclamation that we are all in dire eradication. And this world is coming to a dire cessation because they refuse the salvation. But you can receive the salvation and the justification and be with Jesus in his eternal plantation. You'll be able to give him a warm embrace when you see him face to face and he takes you with him to that heavenly place. Amen? Am I right about it? So stop worrying about your car, your finances, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, whatever. Anything that's troubling you, stop worrying about all those things. Stop worrying about the things in this world because 
These things that we have in this world is temporary. Your car is temporary. Your husband, your wife is temporary. Your house is temporary. Your kids is temporary. This world is temporary. Your life on this planet is temporary. But Jesus is permanent. Yo, Jesus is permanent. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit up in here. Hallelujah. Jesus is permanent. Jesus is the guiding light for all to see. Jesus is the guiding light. Because I lay my life down. I lay my life down at his feet. Because it's him that I shall meet when the world has been evangelized and the church is complete. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's what I live for. And I want everybody under my voice to do the same. To know Jesus. To love Jesus. Scripture says... God said, love me with all your mind, body, heart, and strength, and your soul. This is the one commandment we need to follow. And the second one is just as great as the first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Don't worry about the Old Testament, the Mosaic law. They couldn't follow that law. The Israelites could not follow that law. That was the old covenant. Now, mind you, God's covenant with the Israelites still stands. God's covenant with the Israelites still stands. When he made the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen? And Jesus came from the line of David. And the seed of David. Okay? So... Jesus is the new covenant. Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And it's only through Jesus, only through Jesus, my people. It's only through Jesus that you can know God the Father and receive salvation. Because Jesus said, thank you, Father God, for the children that you have given me. No one can pluck them out of my hand. Amen? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He will move all of your pain. He'll take away all of your strife. He'll show you how to live again and give you a new beginning and make you complete. And you can trample the enemy's head every day with your feet. I know he's attacking you. I know he's attacking you. He's attacking everybody right now. But you know, the thing about that is he's got about 85 to 90 percent of the world. They're already doing his bidding. He's working on the kids now. He's working on the children. You know what they're teaching in school now? T.G.I. That's what they're teaching at the schools now. TGI. Transgender identity. Don't be surprised if your son or your daughter comes home one day and says, Mommy, I want to be a man. I want to be a boy. And your do- and your and your son says, Mommy, I want to be a girl. I think I meant to, I was meant to be a girl. That's why they're teaching that in their schools because the schools are so demonized. Satan has control of everything in this world right now, and it's for a little while. And the school is so demonized right now. Satan has penetrated the schools. He's penetrated the churches. That's why you got so many false prophets, false preachers, false teachers, false churches. You know why a, you know why a church is so weak? Because the pastor's weak. You know why a church is so corrupt? Because the pastor's corrupt. Amen. That's how Satan works. Scripture says that Satan 
comes forth as an angel of light. Satan could be anybody and anyone. Satan could be walking right next to you, putting those thoughts in your head. But when you have the armor of God on you, and you have your cup, you're fully covered by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> You'd be like, <laughs> he'll shoot those arrows at you. You'd be like, <laughs> stop, stop tickling me, Satan. Those arrows won't do nothing to you. You'd be like, stop tickling me. <laughs> Get away. They won't be able to do nothing to you because you're protected by the blood. And you have your arm of God on every day. You know, when Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, the evil one tempt, uh, tried to tempt him. And what did Jesus do? What did Jesus say? The devil said, Thou art the Son of God. Turn this stone into bread so that you may eat. And Jesus said, Thou shalt live by the word of God and the word of God alone. See, Jesus used scriptures. Scriptures. You used scriptures because the devil is so, so afraid of scriptures of Jesus, you know what I'm saying? And he's a fool anyway for even trying to tempt Jesus, you know what I'm saying? That's how, that goes to show you how foolish he is. He's a cunning liar, and he'll mix the lies with the truth, you know? So you just got to be on guard every day and use discretion. But once you have follow Jesus and have Jesus in you, there's no way that he can attack you. See, when you, when you don't have Jesus, you're weak. You're a weakling without Jesus because Jesus said, without me, you are nothing. You know what that means? I'm going to break it down for you. Without me, you are nothing. That means you could be the richest man in the world. Who has everything, women, cars, money, and the same goes for women as well. Man or woman, it doesn't matter. God doesn't discriminate. You could have everything in the world, and you can have fame and fortune, but just one thing you don't have. If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. And you are nothing and you will be nothing because all of those things that you have is temporary and when and when you go you can't take nothing with you to heaven have you ever seen a hearse did I say that right have you ever seen a hearse attached to a u-haul mm, I don't think so you better think about it you can't take nothing with you but your your alma, your soul. You know what God said about your soul? Don't believe the hype. You can't sell your soul. The devil can't take your soul. You know what God said about your soul? God said, all souls belong to me, say it the Lord. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. But all souls belong to me. Your soul goes right back to heaven. Until judgment. Your soul goes right back to heaven. Until judgment. And when you're dead. If you don't know Jesus. If you don't. If you're not chosen. You'll be like. Oh I'm alive. But guess what. You ain't going to be smiling if you don't know Jesus. God's going to point you to the lake of fire. And Jesus, before God points you to the lake of fire, along with those billions of people that are going there right now, before he does that, Jesus is going to tell you, depart from me. 
I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So you need to get right with Christ today. You know what I'm saying? If you got a Bible at home right now, open your Bible up today. Open your Bible today. Open your Bible today. Open your Bible and pray. Open it. Open it. Am I right about it? <laughs> but no, no joke. I love you all, but I don't want to see anybody, anybody go to the lake of fire because it's not going to be fun for anybody. It's not going to be fun for anybody when Jesus comes because scripture says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many will be running to and fro and hiding in caves. Don't let that be you. Feel me? Don't let that be you. Today could be your. Today could be your day of salvation. Think about it. Please think about it. You know what I'm saying? I know it's hard. I know it's hard. You know why? Because it took me 48 years to come out of my shell. It took me 48 years to know that Jesus is real. Jesus is Lord. But I don't want you to be like me when you come to the end of yourself and you lose everything like I did. Don't wait until that happens. Come to him now. Come to him now. Because Jesus can't do nothing for you if you die in your sins. If you die in your sins, that's it for you. You're done. And don't take the mark of the beast. Because we're getting close to that time right now. Don't take that mark. Don't take the mark of the beast. Because once you take the mark of the beast, that means you're worshipping the beast. You're worshipping the beast. Amen. So please, make your decision today. Stay blessed. And thanks for watching. Open your Bible today. Open your Bible to pray. Open your Bible today. Open your Bible to pray. Open it. Open it.